In May of 2020, Adobe released updates to Premiere Pro and Media Encoder. These updates added support for Apple ProRes RAW, hardware accelerated encoding for H.264 and HEVC when using an NVIDIA or AMD GPU. As a video editor working on my home brewed editing system, I was looking forward to the improvements in rendering speed. While my new system provided gains in performance and rendering speed, especially when compared to the 10 year old unit that it replaced, I must say I was a bit disappointed in the graphics card. Yes, the CUDA cores did help in rendering, but with Premiere, it's almost 100% CPU driven. Therefore, the fact that this new update would offload more of the rendering to the graphics card was highly anticipated. This update would allow Premiere to be closer to what DaVinci does when it offloads some of its work to the graphics card. After updating Premiere, I decided to run a test. We took a simple sequence, 12 minutes, 48 seconds, has a couple of color corrections on it, a few titles, but basically single layer and just some audio edits. It's HD 1920 by 1080. Looking at our export settings, we're set to H.264. We're going to use the YouTube 1080p full HD profile, which means we'll be making one pass and it's strictly software encoding. While rendering, we'll run a clock and we'll look at the task manager to see how the GPU is performing. You'll notice that there is some activity on the GPU and that's probably due to the OBS capture program running in the background. The graph shows us CUDA activity, video encode, video decode, and amount of memory that's being used. We'll also be able to compare CPU usage in both modes. We start our rendering, and we see that the CPU goes to 100%. There's some activity on the CUDA, but zero on video encode and ever so slight memory usage on the graphics card. We'll speed forward to the end of the render. The render terminates at 558, CUDA drops down to zero, and CPU drops down to 12%. Now we'll go into the edit menu, down to preferences, to media, and about two thirds of the way down, there's a box that you can check that enables hardware accelerated encoding and decoding. Now it says it requires a restart. In my case, it didn't. Again, our format is H.264. The profile is YouTube 1080p Full HD. And as you see in the summary output, it is hardware encoding. We start the render and we see CPU going up to 100%. We see CUDA activity and we also see video encode activity. GPU memory utilization has just a small use. We'll speed forward to the end of the render. Maybe one day it'll render this fast. At 121, GPU and CPU drop down and the render is done. Now that you notice that while the GPU was working, the CPU was pegged out at 100%, while Premiere offloads some of the work to the GPU, it continues throttling the CPU to 100%, thereby maximizing the use of both devices. In our example, this resulted in some really amazing render times. We went from 558 with software to 121 with hardware. That means the hardware encoded version took only 22% of the time of the software version. That's almost four and a half times faster than just software encoding. Now let's take a look at the file size. Were there any differences? Yes, there were differences. The hardware encoded file was bigger, in this case about 73 megs larger, but still not that big of a difference considering how much you saved on the render time. So far, we have quicker render times, slightly larger file size, but not bad. What about the image quality? Because it doesn't matter how fast we render out this file if we get poor image quality. So I brought both files into a timeline, put a crop so I could wipe between them. And when I look at them on the monitor, I'm not seeing a difference. Now, maybe if we threw up some charts, we could see a big difference between the two, but I don't work with charts. I work with images 
and these images look really, really good, and I can't find my division between them. Though, if you look over on the scopes, you will see that there is technically a difference between the two images. The folks at Puget System tell me that software encoding produces the best quality images, whereas hardware encoding has slight defects to it. That is certainly true according to the scopes. Again, looking at the images, I don't see it. Depending on where you fall on that argument, you could argue for the long software encode or the faster time-saving hardware render with a slight imperfection to your image. That's a personal call that everybody has to make. Conclusions that I can draw from this simple test. One, the update definitely speeds up your render times. In my case, four and a half times. File size increases slightly, but I'm not overly concerned with that. Technically, we take a hit on image quality, but on the edge of imperceptibility. And because we can turn hardware encoding on or off, we're able to take advantage of either mode of rendering. Finally, for me, this Premiere update allows us to utilize our graphics card to a much greater extent. And for those of you who don't have an AMD or NVIDIA card, this may be the time to consider upgrading your system with a new video card. Overall, I think this is a really great update and I'm sure lots and lots of editors are gonna be utilizing it. If you found this information interesting, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up. Please, please subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for taking your time and watching our videos.